Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be covering new and updated features in SecureX in December of 2020 and January in the first few days of February of 2021. This covers releases 1.63 to 1.65. My name is Ben Greenbaum, and let's have a look at exactly what we'll be talking about today. The big news is SecureX orchestration has exited beta, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about the browser plugins that were released in December, allowing you to have the SecureX ribbon in the browser everywhere you go. And we're going to talk about some changes that have been made to the pivot menus wherever you may find them. So let's get started with the biggest news. SecureX orchestration is now out of beta. So here we have the SecureX dashboard, and sure enough, you can see that it no longer says beta up by orchestration. What does that actually mean for users who may have been using orchestration for several months now? The last thing on our checklist was to get email events available to you, the users. What this means is that you can kick off a workflow by sending an email. And if you go to create a new event type here, you see that we've got two options and you select email event and this will allow you to specify an email inbox and associate it with an email target and all that good stuff that will allow orchestration to take actions based on an email having been sent into that inbox. Now those actions can of course be any of the orchestration supported uh, activities that your collected technologies allow you to do but it can read the email and make decisions based on the contents, manipulate and process the contents and so on. Super exciting stuff. And to go along with that, we've got a couple of new workflows available, one of which uses that email event trigger. In this workflow, we're taking the initial steps and we're automating the initial steps in any suspicious email investigation. So you may have trained your users to send suspicious emails to a collection inbox. If you have them send those emails as attachments and you hook this workflow up to that mailbox, you know, phishing at yourcompany.com or whatever. It can then receive those emails, process the email attachments, and then inspect the headers and the body of those suspicious emails for various observables like email addresses in the headers or in the body, uh, domains anywhere, files that may be attached to the email and so on. Check the dispositions of those observables. Is this file known to be malicious? Is this email sender known to be suspicious? And so on. If any of them are unknown, We'll then further analyze those observables by sending them to our analysis platform known as ThreatGrid. So we'll send files and URLs off to ThreatGrid to be analyzed to see if even if they're unknown, maybe we can determine that they are in fact malicious by simply observing what they do during various kinds of static and dynamic analysis and so on. Once all that is complete, We'll make a verdict on the email as a whole based on all of those dispositions. And if that verdict is malicious, that this email is definitely bad news, then we will automatically alert the user and alert the SOC via a number of different mechanisms. And we'll create an incident in SecureX so that your SOC can then work that ticket and make sure that no other damage was done. If the email is found to be suspicious or unknown, then we will just alert the SOC and they can continue their existing manual analysis process. But what this should do is weed out the vast majority of those suspicious emails which are low-hanging fruit, which are easily determined to be malicious, and allow your SOC to focus more on the more valuable and frankly more interesting suspicious emails that you may be receiving. The other workflow that we're rolling out as a celebration of sorts of the uh, exit from beta, the escape from beta of orchestration, is the SolarWinds investigation workflow. Now this one is kicked off manually or on a schedule and what it does is it fetches the SolarWinds blog that Talos put out and inspects that blog at that time for observables. Talos has been updating that blog as more information is discovered and so every time this runs it's going to go get the current version of the blog, get all the observables out of it, check the dispositions on those observables and then look for local sightings in your environments using your modules of any observables that were not marked as clean. If any are found if there's evidence of SolarWinds activity in your environment, in other words, it will create a SecureX threat response incident. It will create a casebook. It'll create a ServiceNow incident or ticket if you're a ServiceNow user. It'll send messages via WebEx Teams or Slack or email or any combination of those three. It'll block the files and domains after getting approval from one of your admins via Duo. And if you're an AMP user, it'll take an orbital forensic snapshot and isolate the host. These workflows are presented as kind of a template. And so when I say that we're going to send messages via WebEx Teams, Slack, and email, the expectation, honestly, is that you would turn off or remove the ones that your organization may not use. But this is a huge head start on getting these kinds of things automated for your organization. Now, orchestration has been available for some time. These workflows are new. 
the email event, the email trigger is new. We've got some resources that are not new, but they have been updated to include references to these workflows and that trigger. So we're gonna go over them here. Uh, this is the GitHub repository where you can find all these workflows, the atomic actions and so on for downloading and including into your orchestration environment. We've got the documentation at this link to allow you to learn more about orchestration, how it works, how to import the workflows, how to use the imported workflows, how to write your own workflows and so on. And then we've got the video playlist at this location, including at the bottom of the list there, a new video demonstrating and explaining the phishing investigation workflow that I just talked about. So the next thing on our agenda is the browser plugins that are now bringing you the SecureX ribbon everywhere you go on the web. So here is the Talos blog on SolarWinds. We were just talking about this. Here is the new ribbon-based plugin. And when I open this up, I've got all the functionality of the SecureX ribbon right here in my browser. I can go look at my case books. I can go look at my incidents. I can go use Orbital from right here. And of course, I can still do this and look for observables on the page. And it's gonna pull up all the observables in this blog article. And I can then investigate all of them. I can add them to a case. I can sort them uh, and filter them by their dispositions. And I get the pivot menu on every one of them so that I can take various response actions. And this is where you can get the browser plugin from at those URLs shown for Chrome or for Edge, uh, any Chromium-based browser. And then for Firefox on the right, I try to keep these links simple, try to be respectful of your time. But this is where you can get them from. And then you can install this in your browser and do all of the wonderful ribbon things from anywhere that you happen to be. I should also mention that if you had the threat response browser plugin, you no longer need that. That's no longer going to be supported. It'll still work. But the SecureX browser plugin is the thing that we are maintaining going forward. It offers you all of the capabilities of the previous plugin anyways, as well as offering you access to all of the ribbon capabilities. So go ahead and install the new one. Even if you've got the old one, you'll be better off for it and you'll be able to do more everywhere you go on the web. So next on the agenda was covering the changes in the pivot menus, the ability to create judgments straight from the pivot menu and the ability to look at more details about the verdict that you're seeing. So let's look at a couple examples of the pivot menus. The first and easiest example is right here in the same plugin we were just talking about. Here's an IP address, here's the pivot menu. We've got one verdict for this observable and it's unknown where well, we can now click this and find out why. So Umbrella has explicitly given this IP address the disposition of unknown, that's okay. I can create a judgment. If I know something, if this IP address has been targeting my environment, then from right here I can click on create a new judgment and it will take me to this pop-up where I can give it a disposition, maybe it's malicious because it's been attacking my environment, I can give it a TLP, I can write down a reason. I need to link and select an indicator. So every judgment has to have an indicator so we'll look for indicators that are high confidence, that are TLP green, and we see that I've already created an indicator specifically meant to populate a feed. So we're going to select that indicator just for demo purposes. We're going to pick that one and click select. Now that we've selected an indicator to link this judgment to, I can go ahead and create this judgment. And we've now got a judgment and you see that it now has switched to malicious because my judgment that I have made is now the most trusted verdict. Now you see that there's two verdicts on this observable and here in the pivot menu, I can click on the drop arrow and find out why. Private intelligence, this is the one that I just made. So now we've got this judgment on this observable. If I'm investigating it in future or from anywhere else, I will still see that piece of intelligence that I just created from my browser. So for another example, we are now in ThreatGrid, our file and URL analysis platform. And ThreatGrid has got pivot menus. Now Amp for Endpoints has pivot menus. Many of our Cisco security products have pivot menus. Many more of them are going to be getting them in future. But everywhere you see an observable, we've got this menu and we can click the drop arrow and pivot on it. We see there's three verdicts for this observable. Why is this thing listed as malicious? Well, AMP Global Intelligence has a verdict on it of malicious. Umbrella has a verdict of it on malicious. Talos Intelligence has an unknown verdict. Different information sources are going to have different verdicts. Now in the pivot menu, I can immediately find out why any item has the verdict that threat response has returned for it. And I can also, like I said, create a judgment. 
And here we are back at the SecureX dashboard. So I can show you one more example. Here is our ribbon and here is an incident. Here is an internal IP address. And we see that I can create judgments from right here. Here is an external IP address and you see that I get the verdict information and I can find out more about the specific and individual verdicts that contributed to the overall verdict. Again, everything you get in the pivot menus is available everywhere you have pivot menus, including the browser plugin, including the ribbon, and including any Cisco security product that supports the pivot menus or the ribbon. So that's everything that was on the initial agenda. But wait, there's more. I wanna talk about a feedback mechanism. You, our users, our customers have had some great ideas to help us build SecureX into the powerful cross-functional platform that it is today. And we want to hear from you. And so, in the interface right here where it doesn't say beta anymore for orchestration on the same menu bar up here we have got this little cartoon dialogue button if you click that you can send us feedback you can put in what do you want the team to know and you can type in whatever you want in here and you can rate your experience and if you think this is a bug you'll be prompted to open a case if that's what you should be doing um, because this is really just to send us information it's, it's meant to be mostly a one-way communication however you can also check this box that we can contact you about this feedback if you've got a great idea and we may have questions about your idea and if you're okay with us contacting you check that box and then you click send and then you've sent us some feedback directly from your fingers to our engineers, and we thank you for it. So to recap everything for real now, we've covered the SecureX orchestration escape from beta. We've covered the browser plugins that bring you the ribbon everywhere. We've covered the pivot menus and how you can now create judgments right from the pivot menu and see details about the verdict on any observable that you click the pivot menu from. And then of course, the feedback mechanism so that you can send us your thoughts and your ideas about SecureX. As usual, I'm going to leave you with some resources that you can use to learn more about SecureX. Uh, the top one on the list there is just the basic information about SecureX straight from cisco.com. Below that, we have the YouTube video playlist where you can see demos and get tours like this one and learn more about SecureX and using it in your environment for various purposes. We've got the FAQ below that where you can go find answers to the most commonly asked questions about all of SecureX. And then at devnet, developer.cisco.com slash SecureX, you can really dig in and find out more about writing your own workflows and writing your own automation using the APIs and relay modules and all the great integration capabilities and automation capabilities that are built into SecureX at the foundational layer. And then last but not least, to get more information about these releases and any other releases, you can visit the release notes in the help section of the SecureX user interface. That's all I've got for you this time around. I'll talk to you again in another release or two to show you what's new at that time. But in the meantime, thank you very much. Continue to use SecureX. I hope you continue to get great value out of it in your security operations. And take care.